This is a look into the future. Well, it's an artist's concept of the future of air travel from NASA's Advanced Concepts Lab. Now, I know what you're thinking. It looks crowded. And also, aren't like all NASA labs concept labs in one way or another anyway? In the concept, you see a number of manned and unmanned drones, as well as personal and commercial aircraft flying the friendly skies safely. NASA calls this urban air mobility. Uber, the ride-sharing platform that has upended the taxi industry, plans to play a major role in urban air mobility, with a fleet of flying taxis that passengers would hail on the company's app just like they hail a car today. This week, NASA signed a Space Act agreement with Uber. The companies will work together to research concepts and technologies that will make sure that future air transportation is safe, particularly in high populated areas. And I understand why they want to stay safe. I mean, human life aside, Uber just released new concepts of the flying taxis and they are just too pretty to crash. Uber will offer its plans for a network of flying taxis and NASA will use the data at its research facility at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport and simulate if and how a small flying taxi with passengers aboard will manage the DFW airspace during peak scheduled air traffic. Analysis of these simulations will identify safety issues as the new aircraft take to the air in already crowded air traffic control systems. Bull for tucky. When it comes to rubber duckies, scientists already know a number of things. They're the one. They make bath time fun, so much fun, and they're typically riddled with aggressive bacteria. Well, now, researchers may have found a way to make your rubber ducky power your laptop. I mean, just, I mean, just don't do it in the tub. Researchers from what I think is called Jeju National University in South Korea have found a way to use nano generators to harvest energy from the mechanical vibrations. So your ducky's squeak could get a lot smarter and powerful. But I mean, really the work could mean that future toys can ditch the D-cells and be self-powered. Specifically, the researchers use tribal electric nano generators, or TANGs. TANGs harvest electrical charges from friction. The researchers made the TANGs using aluminum electrodes with silicone-like film between them. It had put them in rubber ducks and clapping toys. When kids squeeze or shake the toys, the electrodes create a charge that, once it's activated, is powerful enough to, you know, for example, light up some LEDs on the toy. So. Your duck's eyes can glow red like the devil! The tangs are durable so they can stand the abuses of childlike behavior and remain operational for long periods of time. In the future, these tanks could also power other smart gadgets like wearables, medical devices, and various other battery powered devices subjected to friction or are often squeezed or shaken. You know, things that use a lot of Ds. The Demon Squeaker. Stare into the eyes of the demon squeaker. I'm actually charging my phone right now. Bullshui! A few weeks ago, we covered Cortica, the Israeli company that has partnered with Best Group in India to analyze closed circuit video feeds to look for behavioral anomalies and identify people who are about to commit a violent crime. We suggested that it was a precursor to a pre crime unit. Some readers didn't like the prospect of the idea. As Timex SS7 said, so if I smile, frown, or have an eye twitch at the wrong time, I could be identified as, quote, getting ready to do no good. Bullcrap. And M. Allen Dean, who said, goodbye, Liberty. We sure had some great times. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> oh, Allen, you're a sarcastic one. You're gonna get along here. However, others like Limping Android seemed fine with the new surveillance tactic. Pre-crime is no different than having undercover cops watching people in a crowd to pick out who's going to start a riot. And while I'm not certain where I stand on the subject, I do know that we should force people to use their actual names in our comment section. Well, it turns out that all this skepticism is warranted. While it's too early to get results from India, South Wales police in Great Britain used facial recognition technology during the 2017 Champions League final, that's soccer, to identify potential criminals. It flagged 2,470 people. 2,297 of them were false positives. They got about 8% right. 
The failure, while astonishing, was likely a result of poor image quality, and some think that the technology is simply not ready for prime time, or whenever the games were held. The police force did take preventative measures, such as reviewing the alerts to see if they were authentic, which has prevented the intervention team from making any bad arrests. I mean, it's good that nobody was locked up over a false positive, and I'm no policeman, but I know that I would be a little upset if 92% of my workday was a waste of time. Right now it's only 89, just ask my boss. The police were actually quick to defend the technology, adding that the facial recognition system has provided 2,000 IDs over a nine month period that led to 450 arrests. No false positives were taken into custody, but to make 2,000 positive IDs, that means the system likely flagged 25,000 people. I mean, I'm not the only one that thinks that's ridiculous, right? How many people are in South Wales? Oh yeah! I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design. The Demon Squeaker.